In this video, we're going to take a look at installing an SSL certificate for Exchange Server 2010. So Exchange Server 2010 uses SSL to secure uh, the various web services that, uh, that it provides, such as uh, Outlook Web Access, ActiveSync, uh, and AutoDiscover. Now, when you first install your Exchange Server, it will automatically configure uh, what is known as a self-signed certificate and bind that to IIS so that it can secure those services by default right from the moment it's installed. Now if you're installing your server on a standalone server, a member server in your Active Directory, what you should see is uh, in the server configuration section of the Exchange Management Console, you should see this Microsoft Exchange self-signed certificate. It says true for self-signed which will probably probably be bound to all of the services, IMAP, POP, SMTP, and IIS. And if you have a look at, at it a little bit closer, you'll see that it's been issued to the Exchange server by the Exchange service. That's a self-signed certificate. If you drill into it a little bit more in the uh, subject alternative names, you'll see that it's been configured with two names, which are the short name of the server and the fully qualified domain name of the server. Now, if you're limited for resources and you've installed your Exchange server onto your domain controller, that is also your certificate authority, you'll end up more likely with this certificate here, which has no name, but isn't self-signed and is bound to IMAP, POP and IIS and SMTP. So let's take a closer look at that one. So you can see here that it was issued to the Exchange server and this time it was issued by the CA itself. So it's not a self-signed certificate, it's actually been issued by the CA. And this is a situation that will uh, only occur automatically if you're installing your Exchange Server directly on the CA. We'll have a little bit closer look at the details. Okay, and you can see that it's got the fully qualified domain name and this GUID as well. Now, the issue is that neither of these certificates are really useful for us. They um, the self-signed certificate has the problem that it is not going to be trusted by any connecting clients because it's not been issued by a trusted CA. And the certificate that has been issued by the trusted CA uh, doesn't have the correct names configured on it in those subject alternate names for all the different services that we're going to be running. So what we're going to do is actually uh, provision a new Exchange certificate. And we can do that uh, over here in the Actions pane with the new Exchange certificate wizard or, of course, by right-clicking on the server and choosing New Exchange Certificate. Now, first of all, we just need to give uh, the certificate a friendly name. So that's just a name that makes it easy for you to visually identify it when you see it in a list of other um, certificates. So I'll just call mine Exchange 2010 Certificate. Now, wildcard certificates uh, are optional. It, they are supported by Microsoft uh, for use in Exchange. There are uh, some specific unsupported scenarios which are mostly around uh, integration with other systems such as OCS and uh, some people prefer not to use wildcard certificates um, for security reasons but in a single service scenario there's not really a security reason not to. But the reason I don't like using wildcard certificates is because you you don't really learn anything about um, how to properly configure a subject alternate name if you just fall back on using a wildcard. So uh, don't choose a wild, wildcard certificate at this point. Alright, now what we get to do here is configure the various uh, DNS names for um, each of the services that the Client Access Server provides. So let's have a look first at the Outlook Web App Service. And we get the option to enable, uh, uh, to choose whether we'll be using Outlook Web Op on the intranet and on the internet. So I'm going to say yes to the intranet and we can see that it automatically populates this field with the fully qualified domain name of the server. And also, I also want to use Outlook Web App on the internet, so I'm going to tick that box as well. And what you see here is it's automatically populated that field with the name that I chose during Exchange Server installation as being my external host name. So as I said back during the install, if you don't, uh, if you didn't want to choose uh, an external name then, 
that's fine, but you'll, you'll just need to manually enter those details here. But if you did choose it uh, during setup, this is one of those examples where it saves you a little bit of time. So I'm happy with OWA. Let's have a look at Active Sync as well. Um, that one's been ticked automatically, and once again, it's been populated with that external name of mail.exchangebootcamp.com that I configured during Exchange Setup. Carrying on down the list, uh, web services enabled, that's fine. Outlook Anywhere. Now what I'm going to do for Outlook Anywhere is get rid of the internal domain name and just have the external name available there. For Auto Discover, um, what we'll want is an Auto Discover name for each of the domain names that are going to be a primary SMTP uh, address for users in the organization. Now, because I'm going to be using, um, I want to be able to send and receive email on the internet, uh, this exchangebootcamp.local domain is not going to be suitable. What I'm actually going to use is exchangebootcamp.com for my um, SMTP addresses, and that's something we'll configure in a lesson that's coming up a little bit later. But for now, we'll just put in autodiscover.exchangebootcamp.com so that we have an autodiscover name for primary SMTP namespace. Now my hub transport server um, has the option of using uh, TLS to secure mail. I'm going to accept that and once again put mail.exchangebootcamp.com. I'm not going to worry about POP and IMAP at this point. And the legacy exchange server name is really only required if you're going to be uh, doing what's known as a coexistence between a previous version of Exchange and Exchange Server 2010. So it's really only in migration and upgrade scenarios and it's not really applicable to us here. So I'm going to leave that one blank. I click Next. And what you end up with is this consolidated list of domain names uh, that you entered in the previous step. So you have an opportunity now to uh, add or remove um, some of those names or edit them. Uh, and you can also choose which one is going to be the common name, which is basically just the the first name on a subject alternate name certificate. So I'm happy with mail.exchangebootcamp.com to be my common name and also to have the auto discover name and the fully qualified domain name of the server also on that certificate. So I'll go ahead and click next. And now it's time to fill out some organization information. If you're going to do what I'm doing, which is to issue your certificate from your internal CA, your private CA, uh, this organizational information is not that important. But if you are planning to purchase a certificate from a commercial provider, it becomes a little bit more important that you get this correct. Uh, and you should read the requirements that are listed on that certificate provider's website as to what exactly needs to be uh, how this needs to be matched up and in most cases you'll find it needs to uh, match up fairly closely if not exactly with the who is information for your domain name and if you don't quite get it right um, you may find that there's just some additional paperwork involved to prove uh, your identity for that uh, certificate that you're requesting from them. So I've gone ahead and filled out that information there and the last step is to choose a location to save the certificate request file. And I'm just going to save it here, overriding one that I did previously. Uh, whoops, I'll delete that one, I should say. And just use the same file name again. All right, happy with all that. And just click New to proceed. All right, so Exchange, the new, new Exchange Certificate Wizard was uh, successfully completed there generating that certificate request file for me. So I'll click finish to close down that wizard. Let's have a look at the file that it created. So I find it here in my C drive in the admin folder where I told it to write the file. And I'm just going to open that file. Try again. I'm just going to open that file in Notepad. All right, so that's what a certificate request looks like. It's, it's not something you can read um, in any way. Uh, but that's the information that you're going to need to submit to your certificate authority. So let's go ahead and do that next step now of uh, requesting the certificate from the certificate authority. So on the Exchange server, open Internet Explorer and just type in uh, 
the name of the exchange server. I use the full name and the virtual directory of cert server, assert SRV. Okay, now if you're like me and you get prompted for this authentication prompt, you might find that no matter what you enter, even if you enter the correct password, okay, got in all right. If you have any trouble getting in after you've entered that password, I'll just show you a quick uh, pointer. Go into IIS Manager and just drill down to the cert SRV folder. Open up authentication, click on Windows authentication and click on providers. And you may need to put NTLM at the top. Okay, so if you're having trouble logging on to your um, uh, certificate services web enrollment pages, just move NTLM up to the top and I'll just restart that and make sure it works. There we go. So if you have any trouble, just check that, um, that uh, provider setting. Okay, now what we want to do is request a certificate. So click that link. And we're going to submit an advanced certificate request. And we're going to submit a certificate request using a Base64 encoded file. And that brings up this form here. So what we want to do is take all of this text in our certificate request, copy it, and paste it in here. The next thing you want to do is change the certificate template to web server. And then finally, just click Submit. And if you get this prompt um, about uh, the website attempting to perform a digital certificate operation on your behalf, you say yes. All right, so now we get the opportunity to download that certificate. So I click the link to download the certificate. And I will save that to my C drive in the admin folder again. Call it cert new, that's fine. And there we go, we don't need that page anymore, I'll just minimise it. And there's our new certificate sitting there in the C drive in the admin folder where I told it to save. So back to the Exchange Management Console, and what we have here is a pending certificate request. So what we can do is right click that and select Complete Pending Request and then just browse and locate that certificate that you downloaded uh, from your certificate authority and click on complete. Completed and completed successfully. So what you should have now is the certificate name that you chose uh, with a self-signed of false because it was issued by a certificate authority not self-signed by the uh, exchange server itself and it should have a status of the certificate is valid for exchange server usage. And at the moment you'll find that it's not bound to any services or perhaps it's bound to IMAP and POP by default, but IAS is the one that we actually want it to be configured for. Okay, so the final step there is to right click and assign uh, services to certificate. Now it adds in the server that we're already uh, logged on to by default, so just click Next. And we'll add in SMTP and IIS. Click Next to continue. And then Assign. And yes, we do want to overwrite, overwrite the existing default SMTP certificate, so say yes to that. And that was completed successfully. So let's test and see uh, whether or not that certificate is actually installed correctly. Go back to your web browser and go to https colon slash slash uh, your full server name and then slash OWA and click enter. And what you'll see is the Outlook web app login page. 
So just have a look at the uh, little padlock icon at the top of Internet Explorer and view the certificate. And what we can see is the certificate that was issued to mail.exchangebootcamp.com from Bootcamp CA. So mail.exchangebootcamp.com is the uh, common name that we chose. And then drill down into the details and we can see that the subject alternate names that we also configured are also there. So that is a valid certificate as far as the client is concerned. It's come from a trusted CA and it matches the name that we're connecting to and it is still within its validity period. So therefore there's no SSL errors in Internet Explorer and we can, uh, we can connect to Outlook Web App. So now we've got an SSL certificate configured for our Exchange Server. We can move on to the next lesson.